All right, so now it's time to go through some early settings in OBS Studio. So I like to use the bottom right button and click settings, and then we'll start in this first general tab. You can choose your theme. I like dark mode. And for these first two checkboxes, show confirmation dialog when streaming starts and when streaming stops, I highly recommend that you check these. I think they're unchecked when you first install, but that just gives you a confirmation dialog before you go live. The last thing anyone wants to do is go live without realizing it. You can also do show confirmation dialog when stopping recording. So if you're gonna do recordings and you don't wanna accidentally stop your recording early, this is a good one. Now, if you wanna record your streams on your local drive while you're streaming, you could consider checking the box for automatically record when streaming so that when you click that start streaming button, it also begins to record. All you would need to do if you wanted to do it manually was just click start streaming and then also click start recording. All the other settings in this general tab should be good to go in the beginning, so let's move on. The stream tab is where you connect the streaming platform that you wanna to stream to and we'll go over that in a later video. Now the output tab is where you're gonna set up your settings for the quality of your stream and the quality of your recording. And it probably defaults to this simple mode, but I'm gonna say, let's go in and select advanced and we'll do our work in here. Now, when you first come in here, you will be in the streaming tab. And the first thing we wanna check is which encoder we're using. Now there's software encoding and hardware encoding. Software encoding uses your CPU on your computer, but that's being shared with a lot of other programs and processes, right? So we want to use our hardware encoder if we have a video card, graphics card. To check for that, just go ahead and click into the dropdown and see if you have other options. There are different names for software encoding that's CPU based. Now for me, I have an NVIDIA graphics card, and so that's what I would select to ensure that I'm using my graphics hardware rather than my processor for all of this. Now, I don't recommend that you rescale output in this menu. I'll show you in another menu where to decide the final size of your stream or file. Now, all these other settings down below, we're gonna cover in a future video about bit rates and streaming destinations. Let's click over to the recording tab next. And the first thing that you wanna set is your recording path. Where do you want the videos to go on your system when you're done? Now the current path shows here, and if you wanna change it, click browse and choose a different folder. Now in recording format, there's a lot of different file formats that it will save to. Uh, for ease of use, I actually recommend just MP4, or if you're on a Mac, probably MOV. But if you wanna learn about all the other file formats and what they do, I would say, that's good research for you to engage with outside of this class. Now you have a couple ways of deciding how to encode the video, and that's gonna affect file size and the quality and things like that. Now, the default is to use the stream encoder. And basically what that means is if you go back to the streaming tab, it's going to use whichever encoder is selected here. And it's also going to use some of the other parameters that we set in the streaming tab, it's going to use those same settings. If you want your recordings to have other specific settings not related to the way that your stream gets encoded, then you would go in here, you would choose your encoder. Once again, software encoder, hardware encoder, I recommend hardware. And then you would set your own properties just like you would in the streaming tab here for recordings. But we'll dive into that stuff in a future video. The audio tab, and replay buffer tabs should be fine as is. The audio tab is where you would bring in different sources of audio, which is also covered in a future video in this series. The video tab is where you choose your canvas resolution, which is the resolution that you're designing your scenes in within OBS, and then your output resolution, which is the final physical size of your video or stream. I personally like to have them both at 1920 by 1080. And you can choose your frames per second quality, 30 frames, 60 frames, or otherwise. For ease of use, again, I like to use 30. In the advanced tab, if you have this process priority dropdown, I recommend you use above normal. That's basically telling your operating system that when prioritizing which programs get more processing power than others, 
that it should be preferential to OBS, getting a good amount of the processing power. Go ahead and save and close, and then I'm gonna show you one other thing in OBS Studio, and that's docs. Now docs are all the different windows in OBS with different kinds of information. For example, your scenes area is a doc, the sources area is a doc, the mixer is a doc, and you may not already have this up, but this stats area is a doc, and I'll show you if you wanted to have that extra information on the performance of OBS, how to get that. I'm gonna close it so it's not there, and we're gonna go to view, docs, stats, and it'll add that doc. Now docs can also be moved around. Now in order to do that, you can just click and drag the title of the doc, and it'll pop out. If you just let it go, it's gonna sit there on its own, or you can drag it to another area, and as you drag it to edges, you'll see where else it could go, and then let go to place it. There are lots of other docs available in OBS, so just go to View, Docs, and you'll see what's there. And once you have it the way you like it, if you wanna make sure that you can't accidentally drag a doc away from where you had it, then you can go to Lock UI. Those are your basic settings to get you started, and in the next video, we're gonna talk about Studio Mode so that you can transition between scenes in a professional manner.